Hi everyone. I just got done watching Dr. O and I thought I would come on. I was waiting for him to get done so I could come on. I found a video through Prophecy Again TV which is um, Save to Serve and they had a video on the first transgender elder in the SDA church and I was appalled when I saw it and I'm sure you will be too but we knew this time was things like this were going to happen so bef so without any further ado I'll turn the camera around so you can watch the video. I think it's about 30 sub minutes and then I'll talk afterwards. This is Prophetic Insights. I'm Hillary Henriquez. I'm Andrew Henriquez. A sad and disturbing reality has come to fruition within the Seventh-day Adventist denomination. And we would be irresponsible and negligent not to warn our viewers and conscientious Seventh-day Adventists as this development has lasting and significant implications. And that is... An interview was conducted at the Hollywood Seventh-day Adventist Church in Hollywood, California. This interview was later uploaded on social media, on YouTube to be particular. In this interview, the interviewee was a transgender male. Not only was this transgender individual a member of the Hollywood Seventh-day Adventist Church, but he's also been installed as an elder and a Sabbath school teacher. Why don't we take a look at that clip? Sure. And I'm very glad that you joined us. Um, for those of you who don't know, Rhonda is one of our newest elders here. And uh, for those of you who the word elder doesn't mean anything, it is a word that has been used to describe members of a congregation that have committed themselves to ministry um, alongside of all of us and to really commit a lot of their time to paying attention to the needs of, our, of each of us. Um, in a really dedicated, focused, purposeful way. Um, and it, it doesn't, it's not something random that happens. Um, something where you feel called by God and people recognize that. And I think that Rhonda exemplifies a, a person who really uh, shares her heart with people and has a desire to see others get to know God. You know, Hillary, that video no, that is would scare shocking, me, to I'll say the you. least. And I don't blame you. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go either. Within the Seventh-day Adventist movement. How could this be? That, that a Seventh-day Adventist church, its pastor, its elders, officers, have come to the point in which they are now supporting the lifestyle of the LGBT movement within the church. How do you think God feels right now? And when we think about the Adventist pioneers, how would they feel if they were alive to see the movement that they shed tears and bled blood in order to launch out so that Christ can win souls? How would they feel if they see the movement looking like this in such a condition today? And I believe somebody has to be held accountable for what is going on at Hollywood Seventh-day Adventist Church. And it must begin with its senior pastor, Brandon Stoltz. Then it must go on up to his ministerial director, then on up to even the conference president. Why is this being allowed in a Seventh-day Adventist church? We have to ask the question, what are the contributing factors that led up to this interview? It's now being broadcasted on social media. What led up to this? Now, there are many contributing factors. But the one most recent is that 21-page document that was compiled, put together by four major entities within the Seventh-day Adventist denomination. The Biblical Research Institute, Andrews University, the Lake Union Conference, and the North American Division of Seventh-day Adventists. And in that 21-page document, many themes are running through it.
But one particular is this. The local pastors within the Seventh-day Adventist churches have the authority. They can now baptize known individuals who are living the lifestyle of the LGBT community. And these individuals can now become members hold offices in the local churches and even become leaders and pastors, elders within the local Seventh-day Adventist denomination. And when we spoke about this, Hillary, a few weeks ago in 2015, many critics say, oh, safe to serve, oh, Pastor Enriquez, you are just bashing the church. This will never take place. This is not what the church leaders mean. Yet, this interview no, that, that took place me. in Hollywood Seventh-day Adventist Church is nothing but a fruit of that 21-page document. It is nothing but an outgrowth of that 21-page document. Absolutely. And it also shows that this has been happening in secret already. This interview indicates that now it's being broadcast out in the open. But for this church, Hollywood Seventh-day Adventist Church, to come forward now, they know that nothing will be done to them. There will be no repercussions. Why? Because they're covered under this 21-page document. And not only that, it indicates that the leaders, not just of the Hollywood Seventh-day Adventist Church, but that the majority of the leaders, at least within the North American division, are in favor and in support with LGBT individuals holding membership and leadership positions. And I see that this is a sign of the last days, a direct sign. For the Bible tells us in Luke chapter 17, verse 27, all the way through verse 30, as it was in the days of Lot, so shall it be in the days just before the coming of the Son of Man. Not only that the lifestyle, the sinful lifestyle practices of the LGBT community will be manifested in the world, but specifically within the church. And we see it also in a biblical account in the book of Judges chapter 19. When we see that the sons of Benjamin, the Benjamites, they were called the sons of Belial. And how they wanted to commit sinful acts, sodomy practices, sodomy acts with the men in the land. And God sent judgment upon those sons of Benjamin who were called the sons of Belial as well. And I want us to focus on the scripture in Isaiah chapter 3. Let's turn there. Isaiah, the third chapter. And Hillary, I would like for us to focus on verse number 8. Read verse number 8 through verse number 11 for us. For Jerusalem is ruined. And Judah is fallen because their tongue and their doings are against the Lord to provoke the eyes of his glory. The show of their countenance doth witness against them and they declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. Woe unto their soul for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. Say ye to the righteous that it shall be well with him for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. Woe unto the wicked. It shall be ill with him, for the reward of his hands shall be given him. And another scripture that we should really focus on that shows us that now we're living in the last days. When God raised up King Josiah to bring about the true revival and reformation in the land of Judah, one of the things that King Josiah encountered was that there were sodomic practices going on among the leadership and among the temple worship. And as it was then, so it is today. And 2 Kings chapter 23, verse 25 through verse 27 says, verse 5 through verse 7 says that King Josiah had to break down the houses of the Sodomites. I want to read that. 2 Kings 23 and verse number 7, it says, speaking about the reform and revival that Josiah brought about in the land. Verse 7, and he break down the houses of the Sodomites that were by the house of the Lord.
where the woman wove hangings for the grove. Grove worship was going on and King Josiah had to break down the houses of the Sodomites and spark that revival in Israel. And the same is what God is calling for in these last days, true revival and reformation. Why? The churches are now cradling, upholding the sinful lifestyle practices of the LGBT community. Now, I think we need to make an important uh, delineation here as we refer to the sodomites. A lot of time when we think of the sodomites, we think of those involved in homosexuality. And the issue that we're dealing with, the current issue, is a transgender male. So can we make a differentiation for our viewers that there is a fine line between uh, one being transgender and one being in a homosexual uh, orientation type lifestyle? Can we kind of uh, make a delineation there? I mean, when you think about this man who is trans transgendered, that means he's born as a man. Yet he thinks that he is a woman. Now, what, what may happen, what will happen if he thinks that he needs now a partner? Which one is he going to choose? Because if he's born a man and he claims to be a woman and takes to himself a man, that's a man with a man. That's homosexuality. It's just confusion. It is pure confusion. And this is why God is saying these things should not be promoted, should not be allowed in his church. Amen. And, you know, uh, the sad thing is these individuals are still considered Seventh-day Adventists. They're still a part of the conference. How can this be? Is this what this movement has come to? I mean, that someone can declare themselves as a transgender individual, a male proclaiming that he's a female, and yet he can still call himself a Seventh-day Adventist? Additionally, in the interview, the transgendered man said, the reason why I'm here and I am allowed to be a Sabbath school teacher and an elder, this is a loving church very inclusive church it doesn't matter what what gender you are what race you are it doesn't matter what your belief system is just be loving just be inclusive and that's why i like hollywood seven day adventist church i think it's very obvious that this is a loving church this is a church that does not care what color your skin is your nationality your religious beliefs, your political affiliation, all those things don't and matter. And now this church with its pastor, Brandon Stoltz, senior pastor, they are now using this interview as a model, Hillary, for all the other Seventh-day Adventist churches within this denomination. Now this is what we can do to win souls. Right. We can bring them in, just love them into the church. So are we saying then we can expect to see more of this? You know, my mind is brought back to Ezekiel 8. Just when you think you've seen it all, you're telling me that we're going to see a lot more of this? God told Ezekiel, Ezekiel, look again. There's even greater apostasy all the way till it came to a point where God's people were worshiping the sun. So ultimately, this is where this is tending to the accepting of the mark of the beast, Sunday worship. And it, it is interesting that uh, sun worship, pagan sun worship, is connected to grove worship. In 2 Kings 23, verse 5 through verse 7, sun worship, Baal worship, is connected to the prophets of the grove. Sodomic practices, homosexuality, licentiousness, orgies, it's all connected. So you are correct. Based on scripture, it's leading to open Sunday worship. Now, we must understand that there are other contributing factors that have led up to this church, Hollywood Seventh Adventist Church, senior pastor Brandon Stoltz, who is now saying it's okay for us to put a person who is a part of the LGBT lifestyle and community to become an elder, a member, a leader, a Sabbath school teacher in our churches. And one issue I see here is the laying aside of our standards. 
biblical principles and all this talk about just love it is a removing of God's standards God's commandments and what I also see that it is because of a false gospel that is being taught in the schools in the seminaries that's being taught in our colleges being taught in the Sabbath school lesson guide that's being taught in our churches from the pulpit that Christ is going to save you in your sins all throughout this interview the transgendered man who calls himself Rhonda he says I was born this way and yeah, because right. I was born this way I should remain this way and everybody must accept me and don't try to change me that is a rejection of the true gospel Amen. he has yeah. received and listened to a perverted gospel all of us were born in sin Hillary all of us and pastor now he's teaching that false gospel remember he's a Sabbath school teacher he's an elder so now, does, does, does that mean that because I was born in sin and however that sin is manifested in my life, in your life, that we must stay that way? God forbid. Christ came to save us from our sins. Read this statement for us in The Desire of Ages, page 671. Listen to what this says. It is by the spirit that the heart is made pure. Through the Spirit, the believer becomes a partaker of the divine nature. Christ has given his Spirit as a divine power to overcome all hereditary and cultivated tendencies to evil and to impress his own character upon his church. Praise the Lord. And one thing I want to warn all of us of is that that scripture in the 18th chapter of the revelation and verse number two and verse number three that scripture those words were also applied to the jewish church before it is given to the church of babylon it says babylon is fallen is fallen and is become the habitation of devils the hold of every foul spirit the cage of every unclean underscore this the cage of every unclean and hateful bird these are the words describing babylon yet those very words were used previously to describe the church in the days of jeremiah i want to make a specific point here and please don't add to my words listen to what god's words say let's turn to jeremiah chapter 5 for this incident interview in Hollywood Seventh-day Adventist Church should not be taken lightly. Listen what this says in Jeremiah mm -hmm. chapter 5 and verse number 26, verse number 27. Hillary, read, that, read those two texts for us. For among my people are found wicked men. They lay wait as he that setteth snares. They set a trap. They catch men. As a cage is full of birds, so are their houses full of deceit. Therefore, they are become great and waxen rich. And listen now, these same words, cage full of unclean birds, are used to describe Babylon in the last days. And listen to what this statement says, Testimonies to Ministers, page 265. It says, the world must not be introduced into the church and married to the church forming a bond of unity through this means the church will become indeed corrupt and as stated in revelation a cage of every unclean and hateful bird so we have the bible and the spirit of prophecy to confirm to give us a word of warning this what is going on in hollywood seven day adventist church must stop the senior pastor must be held accountable the ministerial director of that conference must be held accountable the conference president must be held accountable even all the way up to the union president must be held accountable now you mentioned previously that this false gospel that is being uh, promulgated here at this church hollywood seventh-day adventist church and in the denomination uh, at large is basically a demotion of the standard and an uplifting of what they call love. Yes. Now, love in the Bible is saving someone from destruction. If someone is headed to destruction, 
to certain destruction, headed to perdition? Is it love to sit back and say, well, let's not say anything because they may be offended? Or is it love to pull them out of that train, to pull them out of that situation? And so this love, this false uh, concept of love, while demoting the standards, it's nothing more than spiritualism. And this is what the great controversy pitched 558 states. Now, my real question is, where are the leaders who, who have seen this video? Not only this video, but who have seen what is going on in many of the Seventh-day Adventist churches. Where is the voice of stern rebuke? Rebuke, yes, with love, but where is the voice of stern reproof? It's not being heard. Why? The majority of the leaders are also in favor of this movement of accepting the LGBT community members into the churches because they see increase of membership. They see more monies being placed in the offering plate, tithe and offerings. They see that their popularity will grow wider. Their influence will become more potent in the church and in society. So they are silent. So my question is, where is the voice of protest? Like those Protestant Christian reformers, when they saw what was going on in the churches, they could not keep silent. Like Jeremiah, he says, your word Word was in my heart as fire. I could not keep silent. Where is the voice of protest? But what I now see, most of these preachers who see what's going on, they are afraid to say anything because they are, they are afraid of being called names, being called people bashing the church. Being, being called people who are airing dirty laundry in public. They are afraid of being called offshoots, so they just keep silent. But Jesus says, those who remain neutral and silent in a religious crisis, God views them as criminals in his sight. Read this statement for us. Testimonies for the church, volume 3, page 280. Listen what this says. And now, in this fearful crisis, in the presence of the idolatrous priest and the apostate king, they remained neutral. If God abhors one sin above another, of which his people are guilty, it is doing nothing in case of an emergency. Indifference and neutrality in a religious crisis is regarded of God as a grievous crime and equal to the very worst type of hostility against God. Can I just say this, as you mentioned before, that Hollywood Seventh-day Adventist Church did not come to this point overnight. We could see a lowering of the standards just by the interview. You can see the dress, the jewelry, the hoop earrings, the, the pants wearing by the interviewer. I mean, just the backdrop of the church set up like a mm -hmm. concert, a Christmas tree with lights on. I mean, it, it, it didn't just come to this point overnight. There had been a lowering of the standards from day one, step by step by step. And so if you're a part of a church where you may not have someone that has come out of the closet to say, I'm a woman when they were born a man or vice versa, or I'm in the homosexual lifestyle, you may not see that. But do you see a lowering of the standards in other areas, in areas of diet, in areas of dress, in areas of, of Christian deportment? Yeah, and and my heart is touched right now because what does Jesus feel as he sees what's going on with the church that should be a light in the world? And all I'm hearing from these pastors and conference leaders is don't focus on those things. Let's all just focus on evangelism. Recently, a few days ago, the GYC had their annual gathering. They went out knocking on doors, handing out truthful literatures. That's good. Let's do evangelism. But when we br bring souls from the world, from Babylon, where are we going to bring them to? Where are we going to bring them to? Are we going to bring souls? And many of them are spiritual. All they want is the missing links of truth that we have to give to them. And they will come and sit in a Seventh-day Adventist church. And the pastor is upholding the lifestyle of the LGBT. And T stands for transgender in the church. 
that will not fly for many people. They will not stand for it. And this is why we are told in, in the word of inspiration that God does not now work to bring many in the church. Hear this statement. Testimonies, volume 6, page 370. Listen to what this says. The Lord does not now work to bring many souls into the truth because of the church members who have never been converted and those who were once converted but who have backslidden. What influence would these unconsecrated members have on new converts? Would they not make of no effect the God-given message which his people are to bear? That is so on the point. And that's why I'm saying, but God wants to win souls. So where is he going to bring these souls from the world? And the world must be sown with the gospel seed of truth and watered before the mark of the beast is enforced. That means God has to raise up men like John the Baptist. He has to raise up self-supporting schools and churches and ministries that they might be a holding place for these souls and to prepare them for heaven for the coming crisis. It must take place. And this is why during Christ's earth ministry, in Matthew chapter 15, Christ said, if the blind follow the blind, both will fall in a ditch. In Matthew 23, verse 13 through verse 15 and 17, Christ said, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, you profess to be doing evangelism, crossing land and sea to make one proselyte. But when you are finished, you make him twofold, the child of hell, than yourselves. And this is what is going on in our churches. So the question is, I can only speak for my family. Hillary, I can only speak for my family. I would not allow my family to sit in any church where there is a person openly practicing the sins of the LGBT community, not on the God son. Listen to what this says. Friends, I can only speak from my household. What you want to do, you can do. But remember, by beholding, you become changed. Hear what this says. Great Controversy, page 45. After a long and severe conflict, the faithful few decided to dissolve all union with the apostate church if she still refused to free herself from falsehood and idolatry. They saw that separation was an absolute necessity if they would obey the word of God. They dared not tolerate errors fatal to their own souls and set an example which would imperil the faith of their children and children's children. To secure peace and unity, they were ready to make any concession consistent with fidelity to God. But they felt that even peace would be too dearly purchased at the sacrifice of principle. If unity could be secured only by the compromise of truth and righteousness, then let, let there, there be, be difference, difference and even war. And then the next paragraph says, well, would it be for the church and the world if the principles that actuated those steadfast souls those steadfast souls were revived in the heart of god's professed people and this is why in acts chapter 2 when the disciples went forward after pentecost and began to proclaim the present truth of that day verse number 40 the apostles told those people who were now exposed to present truth they said flee save yourself from this untoward generation they did not send these people back to sit under these priests elders who were leading the people astray into sin they said save yourselves from this untoward generation and verse 1 through verse 47 and 48 it says that the people began to fellowship with the apostles in breaking bread with them from house to house and god added to that movement that church daily such as should be saved as it was then so it is and will be right now in this earth's history you referenced earlier luke 19 and you asked the question how must jesus feel as he sees the condition of his people his chosen people 
Well, he's been at this point before because he saw it in the Jewish church just before their probation was about to close. And as he approached the city, shining in its beautiful splendor, he didn't see that. What he saw was their condition, their spiritual condition. And not only did he see the Jewish church at that particular time, he looked down the ages and saw the church in this final generation. He saw the sins that would be allowed and would be taking place in the church at large and even in the hearts of, of his professed people. And verse 41 of Luke 19 says, as he beheld the city, he wept over it. He's weeping. He's in pain. He's in anguish because his people are bringing a reproach upon themselves, but more so upon his name, upon his character. And he says in 42, if thou hadst known even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes. For the day shall come upon thee that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee and compass thee round and keep the in on every side. It goes on, and they shall lay thee even with the ground and thy children within thee, and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another, because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. Christ. Don't stop there. And then in verse 45, and he went into the temple, Hillary. He said, This is why he was weeping. <laughs> what brought the church in such a condition? So that they did not know the time of their visitation, did not know the things which belonged unto their peace. It was the leaders in the church. That's why in verse 45, he went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold therein and them that bought saint unto them. It is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves robbing the people of their salvation and this is why this broadcast is sending forth this warning this instructive material that we may understand what is going on within what around us that, that we can happened. understand what the solution should be and then ask God for the strength to carry out his instructions to save the church and the world, regardless if the heavens fall, regardless if people point fingers at us, regardless if people call us names, I mean dirty names, regardless of what they want to say and how they want to persecute us. We cannot fear man, we must fear God. And if God's love is in my heart, I must do what it takes that souls may have an opportunity to accept Christ as truth before it is too late. If Christ is in your heart, you will not keep silent. You will not be neutral. You will not say, let somebody else deal with it. You will do all in your God-given power, time, and strength to bring about revival and reformation. As Christ asks Peter, Peter, lovest thou me more than these? And all Peter could say, Lord, thou knowest I love thee. Then Christ says, feed my lambs, feed my sheep, feed my sheep. I take that question and that commission serious. You must take that question serious. You must take that mission seriously. Lovest thou me more than these? So what if we lose our membership in local churches? So what? If we are called names because we stand for God's truth, Peter, Andrew, Hillary, Save to Serve International, Christ is asking one question, lovest thou me more than these? Feed my sheep. I was really upset when I first saw that because I could not believe that that was happening in the Adventist church. Although I thought it would be coming, but uh, to openly accept it like that to me is is real, is they're accepting the the sin, and that is not right. And and I can imagine that Jesus is weeping in heaven to see stuff like this going on in in his church, and it's so sad. And we need to stand fast. And I agree with Honor Sabbath what she says that 
when she was in the church, she when saw that person come in, she left the church. I would too. Now, we do have a person in our church that none of us are sure if it's a transgender or is a cross-dresser. He's got some problems, I guess. He does use a men's restroom, so that's a good thing. He doesn't. He only wore a dress once. He's been wearing pants ever since, but it's still a scary thought to think it, it's happening in the church. He's not an elder. He's just a regular layperson in the congregation. That's bad enough, but for this guy to be in the church there in Hollywood, California, and be an elder. That's even worse yet. He's standing up in front, and he's leading out in Sabbath school, teaching in Sabbath school class. I don't know where their minds really are. I don't know where T uh, Ted Wilson's mind is either, why they're really allowing this. I think that our church is, is lax on some things, and I think it's so sad because here the time is getting so short, and they're allowing this to happen. It's, maybe it's because they don't want to discriminate against them or or they're, they'll feel that they're going to be, you know, uh, do something to the to the congregation, or you know, what do something to the church because they're not accepting of them. I w I wouldn't worry about that because that is so wrong. <laughs> Nobody has a right to. I mean, they have a right to worship where they please. That's true, but I don't think that our church should allow something like that because they're going completely against God. God does not like it. Yeah. You know. No, well, no, you can't, you can't make them change their lifestyle, but we shouldn't really allow it when we're in the church either, you know, and it's probably going to happen in a lot more churches before the, before the end of time. And it's sad. I hate to think of it happening, you know, but times, times are really what the times being what they are. And like they talk about the mark of the beast, you know, well, we as Seventh-day Adventists, that to us. And I'll explain it to you. LBGT is a sin. People were not born that way. They choose to be in that lifestyle. And God loves the sinner, but he hates the sin. So by them accepting the Adventists, accepting them into the church like that, they're accepting the sin that they're doing. And it makes them as bad as the one doing it. They they shouldn't be doing... I mean, they're, they're uh, not accept... Not even going by the 28... We have 28 um, doctrines. And they're not even following the 28 doctrines when they do something like that. So if I was in a church like that, I, would, I wouldn't I would be too happy about being in there either. I mean, that person would it would bother me. You know, our church, however, has accepted this man in our church that either cross-dresser or tra transgender, you know, he was afraid that people were going to turn, turn his... Now, I didn't know who he was until I was greeting one Sabbath and found this out, you know, and I'm not going to say anything bad about him, but I'm, I'm just a little leery too, you know. We shouldn't really accept this stuff. God doesn't accept, accept it. And the thing of it is, people like that are not going to go to heaven. The Bible says so. In Corinthians, and I'm not sure if it's 1 Corinthians or 2 Corinthians, I have to look it up to know the exact, exact passage, but I've read it because it said, no homosexual will inherit the kingdom of heaven. And I frankly wouldn't want to be in heaven with a homosexual. I mean, that's just... It's too, it's a bad lifestyle, and people will say it's not a choice. They're born that way. Well, like, like Dr. O said, you're not born that way. It is a choice. God didn't create ugly, and that's exactly what that is. It's very, very ugly, and I'm not trying to judge. I'm trying to do this in love. I, I know that, that things like this are happening, but I can love that person, but I don't love what they do, and I can tell them, well, I love you, but I don't love what you do, and it's true. God's the same way. You don't love what they do. It's a sin. What they're doing is totally wrong. The LB, all the gays, transgenders, bisexuals, or whatever, they're all in a very grave sin. And we, as Seventh-day Adventists or Christians, do not have to accept it. I know that, that the gay lifestyle has been around since Sodom and Gomorrah. Oh, 1 Corinthians 6, uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 6. Well, thank you for telling me because I wasn't sure exactly where it was at. And I know it's been around. Gays have been around since, since Sodom and Gomorrah. And sure, they have never been talked about much. You never really thought about much of them, much uh, years past. But here lately, it seems like everywhere you turn, there's there's a LBGT, you know, and they don't want to be discriminated against. They'll, you know, you got to let them have their way and things like that, you know. And some of you may know what happened here in Oregon to a, a bakery. A couple owned a bakery. And there were two lesbians that came in there wanting, a, I think it was lesbians, either that or two men, but I'm not sure which. But anyway, they came in and wanted a, a cake made for their wedding. Well, these people, these, this couple were a Christian, and it, it was against their conscience to, to make them a cake. 
So they refused to make him a cake. And instead of this couple going to another bakery that possibly might have made them a cake, they went and sued them for a hundred and thirty some thousand dollars and they lost their bakery and their livelihood because of it. So see, you can't say or do anything against them because they think you're discriminating on them and they'll, and they'll take you to court faster than, than you can say scat. And it's not right. Where is our rights as a Christian? I feel sometimes we're discriminated against because all they, all they gays is want their rights and we don't get ours. We as Christians can't say anything bad to them, but they can say bad things about us and things like that. And that, you know, that's a double standard. That isn't right. So we have to stand fast because we know that time is coming where the National Sunday Law is going to come upon them. And I hate to say this, but some of those gays probably aren't even going to be ready for that. They're not even going to know anything. They're not worshiping Jesus. You know, I, to me, you can't be gay and be a Christian or a transgender and a Christian. You can't put them in the same sentence. They just don't mesh with me. And uh, I just hope and pray that that guy in that Hollywood church changes his mind and goes back to being a man because that's what God created him in the first place. Because as far as God is concerned, he'll always be a man. He'll never be a woman. I don't care what he does to the outside. He can't. He can put a dress on all he wants, wear the wig, makeup, eyeliner, lipstick, or whatever. It's not going to change the fact that he was born a man. Oh, what happened on that video? I, I'm going to show that video another night. But basically what it was is, is the man um, is a transgender gender elder in the uh, Seventh-day Adventist Church in Hollywood, California. And he was being interviewed by one of the other church members in Hollywood, California. And he said it's a loving church, and that's why he's a member there. I had watched the video where, he was, where it was just a, a complete video of, of her interviewing him. And... Uh, Oh, a Hollywood SDA, I'm not sure. Um, Honor Seven said she used to go to that church and left the church because of it. But um, I, there is one complete video of him being interviewed. And I call him him because that's what he is. That's right. He did give us the choice to know the truth. And we need to stick by the truth. And we need to tell others the truth. And that's why I do these periscopes. But I was appalled at when I saw this. And I thought we as at Seventh-day Adventists need to get the message out that the gay lifestyle is not going to be tolerated. We're not going to hate them. And that's what I want to say from the outset. I do not hate gays. I love them. I just don't love what they do. And we can't. We as, as Seventh-day Adventists, as Christians and norm, doesn't matter if we're Adventists or not, we should not be accepting of that because we're accepting the sin. And that should never be. God's not accepting the sin, so why should we? Um, somebody, and I saw it when I was playing the video, and I didn't, uh, I didn't uh, put the, give you the title. But actually, the title of the video is First Open Transgender SDA Elder Under Pastor Stoltz in Hollywood, California. So all you have to do is, when you want to find this video on YouTube, just look under First Open Transgender SDA Elder, and this one should come right up. That's what I did. I mean, I didn't even know there was anything like that out there. And when I saw it, I thought, i got to look at this. And when I saw it, I was appalled. I just shook my head. I thought, oh, my goodness. What is this world coming to? What is our churches coming to? Oh. It's so sad. And, and, and the... Uh, it makes you wonder why the pastor did that. I mean, oh my, it is, it is so sad. So very, very sad. We have to stand by what we know to be the truth. And we have to tell, we have to preach the truth, come what may, and take the consequences, no matter what they may be. Because as long as there's gays out there, we're going to preach the truth. That they're in, they're, they're in the wrong lifestyle. They, it's a sin what they're doing, and they need to come out of it, or they're going to be lost. They're going to, they're going to take the mark of the beast, and, yeah, I, I was shocked, too, when I saw the video. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh I like that LBGTQ. I don't know what the Q stands for, but I kind of like that T. Oh, queer, I think. Isn't that right? It stands for queer. I think that, I've never seen it put that way, but I've seen some, some put that on the end, and I think, well, that's about right, you know. But the thing of it is, you can, you can say it to other Christians, but you better not say it to the LBGT because they are really going to be offended. They take offense very easily. But me as a Christian, I take offense to them saying things they do about us and saying that, um, that it's not a choice, that they were born that way. I take offense to that because God never created ugly. If that's the case, why aren't we all gay? When none of... He didn't, he didn't make ugly people. He made beautiful people. We were all born in his likeness. God's not gay. And I had, a, I had one of the persons on, 
on Dr. O say, he, he said that I was gay or more or less that my grandchildren were gay. Well, that was very offensive to me and that was very hurtful because none of my grandchildren are gay. And this guy comes in there and is a scoffer anyway and always says bad things. But, you know, it's terrible. I'm a, like I said, I'm offended by the, by the LGBT because they, they don't um, want us saying bad things about them, but yet they can say all kinds of things about us and we're not, and we can't do anything about us, about it. And that's the thing. And if you say one bad thing, like I said, about the LBGT, you're taken to court. And it's so sad. It is so sad. And for those in here that that may not know about the National Sunday Law coming, it's a an enforced Sunday law where, where you're going to be forced to worship on Sunday. And if you don't worship on Sunday, you're going to be persecuted. You're going to be taken to jail. You're going to be, um, like I said, persecuted. You may be martyred. You lose your Bible. You lose your life things like that, but we have to stand fast. And the ones that take the mark of the beast, they can buy or sell, you know, so we have to be prepared for that. We don't want to recant and and, buy, and take the mark of the beast because that's going to be a terrible time. And those that take the mark of the beast are are doomed. They're going to die in hellfire. And also I want to tell anybody in here that may think there is such a thing as a secret rapture. That is not biblical either. The secret rapture is the word rapture is not even in the Bible, but rapture is caught is being as is, is means caught away. Yes, we are caught up to meet Jesus, but it's not secret because the Revelation, I think one eight, I have to look it up for sure, says every eye shall see him. What does that mean? Every eye shall see him. It's not a secret if he's gonna if you, every eye will see him, and though even those that pierced him, and also he's gonna come with the sound of a trumpet and a shout. How can that be secret? And then, like I said, the pastors will preach these people about the talk about the rapture of the church because they don't want to talk about the tribulation. And I think yet they know the tribulation is coming before the rapture, but they don't want to speak preach it that way because they don't want to scare the congregation. So be it. So what if they do scare them? The congregation needs to be scared. They need to sit on the edge of their seat and they need to wake up. And that's why I do these periscopes, trying to wake people up to what's going to happen. We have to stand for the truth at all costs. And that's what I'm saying. I don't hate the gays. I love the gays. But I'm going to stand for the truth and I'm going to say it's wrong. It's a sin. They were not born that way. It was a choice. And just and I hope and pray that someday they will come out of it. We had a, we have prayed for a person on Dr. O's scope that's, a, that's in the gay lifestyle and wanted deliverance from it. And I think that's absolutely wonderful. Because, uh, yeah, the one resurrection is good. That's the first resurrection. That's when Jesus comes, when the righteous are taken to heaven. The the resur the resur um the the uh, righteous dead are going to be resurrected first, and we which are alive are going to remain and go up with Jesus. So the second resurrection is the one of the wicked. We don't want to be in that one. <laughs> I won't ca watch that kind of stuff. Rock Rocky Horror Picture Show. No, I won't watch that kind of stuff. I I think that's ridiculous, and Halloween is ridiculous, and all that stuff. But uh, but getting back to this, we need to we need to stand for for the truth. And I hope none of you have have uh, family members that are gay. But if they if they are, love them anyway. But try to explain the truth to them and tell them, show them in the Bible where it says that homosexuals won't make it to heaven. If they want to get to heaven, they need to come out of that lifestyle, because that's going to take them right down, you know. And and we don't want any of and I don't want anybody lost. And that's why I do these scopes. I want everybody saved as well as I want to be saved. Oh, okay, all right, I. I didn't know anything about that. Yeah, I know who Lauren Cox is, yeah. But we don't want to be lost because of, of taking the mark of the beast or being in a lifestyle that we have no business being. Like I said, all these gays that have been shot and killed, like those ones that were shot in Orlando back in the summer, we don't know if any of them were saved or not. Probably more than likely they weren't. They went to their grave not knowing anything about Jesus, and here they're going to they're going to probably suffer in hellfire because of it. So we need to get the truth out to these people. Christians, atheists, or whatever, people that don't know Jesus and that are, are in grave sin, we need to tell them to come out of their sin. In Babylon, it's all it is is confusion. We know that Satan's the head of it. He's, he's right ahead of this LBGT um, thing. I mean, he, he's the one that got, got that guy in the transgender lifestyle, and he's thinking, he, no, I'm doing right. When I saw the, like I said, when I saw the video of him, when they were interviewing him, now I think it was about a 20-minute video. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, it's not what God wanted for any of us. And and when they say, well, it's not a choice, I don't see how they can say it's not a choice. You know, because 
Uh, they say, well, nobody chooses to be dis discriminated uh, at. But I can't, I, I don't understand why they feel that way. If they say it's not, it's not a choice to be discriminated at, they, it's not real, it was a choice. They're the ones that chose to be gay. God didn't make them that way. And But these ones that be two and three year old kids that say they, they uh, like that guy, that transgender there in Hollywood, California, at a very young age, I'm not sure if he said his age now. Um, I have to go back and watch it again. But he said at a very young age, when he was a boy, he felt that something was wrong. He felt he was in the wrong body. And it makes me wonder, how in the world did he know that? Somebody had to put, put that in his mind. Maybe his parents or something. I don't know. Because usually a young child like that is not going to know anything about that. They're not going to understand what LBGT is or anything like that. So, you know something steered him in the wrong direction and I'm just hoping and praying that he changes his mind but as you can see the small little clip that they put up there he's an awful ugly for a woman he needs to go back and and dress as a man and look like a man and take the wig off and and act and the way God made him I mean it's terrible to be like that and like I said he can try to change his outside all he wants but he's never going to be able to do it because as far as God's concerned He's always going to be a man. He's going to he, he's man now, and he, if he dies, he'll still be a man. Resurrect if he if God's in the first resurrection, he'll become up as a man. He won't come up as a woman. You know that's not for me to say on whether he'll be saved or not. That's only for God to say. But chances are, if he doesn't come out of his sin, he doesn't stop doing what he's doing. And being a Seventh Day Adventist, he isn't going to make it because we know some Seventh Day Adventists are are going to go into hellfire, which is a sad thing. But it's going to happen. We know there's going to be people in all denominations that are going to lose their salvation. So, yeah, I heard I heard about that, the Queen James Bible. I think uh, Bible Flockbox, he talked about that too, and I watched his video once. And that is sick too. Yeah, I know. It's the Queen James Bible, I, I would not want anything like that. It's it's terrible. It's, it's everything with the gay... It's, yes, it's very disgraceful. I agree with you. Like I said... Um, when I see the LBGT and the things like that, the first thing it makes me think of is that everybody cares about them, but where's Jesus? It's like Jesus is put on the back shelf somewhere. He's not even thought about. They get all the glory, and they shouldn't get any of it because they're totally against what God wants them to be. I mean, like I said, he didn't make them that way, and yet they said, well, he, you know, it wasn't a choice that, that they became gay. But my, my question is, well, then why didn't they become gay earlier if that if that if they feel they were that they were born gay? It's it's really crazy. I mean, it's it's terrible for people to think that. It's to me it's it's uh, um offensive to say that my Jesus created people gay because he did not. I I I don't blame you. I w I would be disgusted if I'd see something in my church like that too and and I don't know why why they're so accepting of it. I don't care if they are a loving church. To accept something like that is totally not the norm. And we know that the church as a whole is going to stand. But when I see something like this, it really upsets me. And I'm not, I'm not going to leave the church because of it. Because I think we're in the true church. Because not all Adventist churches are going to accept that. I, I'm sure. Of that. I hope not anyway. But it's just, just so sad to see it even happening even in one church let alone all of them. So I just hope and pray that you all stand stand true for what you know to be right and tell others the truth and stay in the word of God. See, these ones that are gay and stuff, they don't read their Bible. They have no idea that it's even in there. I had a guy argue with me on, on uh, Dr. O's that he said he's read the Bible. He never saw anything in there about homosexuals not making it to heaven. I says, I know I read it because I, I read it more than once. I've seen it. And the word homosexual is in there. So we just have to be... Uh, true and stand true and and tell people the truth and if it and if offends them and if if they get upset so be it because it needs we need to wake people up and I hope these periscopes like this wake people up because uh, we're all asleep you know we're in a, we're in lukewarm we're in Laodicea right now and we need to come out of Laodicea we need to get out there and we need to do the work However we can, when we give out tracts, go door to door, tell people about Jesus or whatever. We need to get the work done so Jesus can come. Because like I said before, this world is getting worse and worse and worse. And it's not worth living. It's not really living at all. We won't be living actually until we get to heaven. So let's all do our part and share the gospel with others so that Jesus can come very soon. Because I, I want to go home and I'm sure all of you do too. I'm going to think I'm going to call it quits now because I'm getting a little tired. Because it's getting late where I'm at. But... 
I just want to thank you all for supporting me and coming in here and, and uh, commenting and, and being here for me because I, I really I love you all. And I hope you have a good night or day wherever you might be. Take care and bye-bye.